Welcome back to the Lion's Den, everybody. Panzer King here, and this is the prelude to war. We have already done a turn with Germany and Japan, um, just briefly doing their turns, and it's the beginning of 1936, so not much is happening. But I wanted to give you a run over and just a brief tutorial of what's the map as it is. Tomorrow night, we will have Madman Dan, General Hand Grenade, and Panzer King here duking it out three sides we'll probably play a few turns we're hoping to play a few turns anyways might get through 37 maybe even to 38 it depends we'll just see how things go um but yeah i'm excited this is going to be fun it's been a long wait and i'm interested to see how this is going to unfold i have a lot of different ideas and ideas i've watched online and Many things I want to implement, but we'll see how uh, everybody wants to uh, play their version of this game and go from there. Uh, but yeah, let's just do a brief tutorial of the map. I want to go over just a few things here, some things I've noticed, um, and just see what you guys' thoughts are, um, because this game's probably going to go on for a month or two. I'm hoping anyways, and we'll see how everybody's schedule is. If it works out better, we might end it quite sooner, but um, with this current world we live in right now, I'm not hoping for much. Um, right now you see an ocean liner. Uh, it just left Paris. It's on its way to Singapore to uh, see uh, drop off some uh, weary travelers, I'm sure. But um, as probably many people saw from our last video, you saw Japan did not make any aggressive movements in the Far East. It actually moved its troops um, and actually uh, quite a bit of its air force down to Formosa here. Um, who knows what they're going to do? Um, only I know, but that's, uh, that's possibly going to change depending on how uh, conditions change. But that's the cool thing about this game. You never know what's going to happen until it happens. But um, yeah, anyways, let's just pan around here. Um, we can look at the Dutch islands here. We see um, the new seaplanes introduced here. I was able to procure a few uh, PBYs and make them my seaplanes in this game. Um, I'm quite excited to try them out in this game. I don't know if I'm actually going to use too many. Probably the Allies will, but we'll see how that turns out. Um, you may notice here, and I'll just touch on this briefly, if you look at the forces here in India, they're kind of that uh, pale green ocean mist look. I've actually made my Far East um, division a different color. It used to be the Canadian color I used to have, but I've actually made that Canadian color red, as you can see. I just feel it's more patriotic, being that I'm a Canadian. But you look at uh, the British forces here, they're a tan color. Um, same down here. Um, in the east of the Mediterranean, you can see more British forces here. Um, I just think it's kind of cool just to, even though the Far East Command is still part of Britain, it's just nice to see a different division, make you think differently, and obviously if perhaps if this transport goes over into the Met, we'll, we'll just change its color and make it a tan ship. And um, if this like cruiser comes over here and, and joins the Far East fleet, then we'll just change its color. Um, I just think it's a little bit more fun just to give the Far East Command a little bit of prowess and make it a little bit more interesting. Um, what else do we have here? Let's just scroll down here. Um, nobody has really had a turn yet, and actually Russia is supposed to have a turn here pretty soon. Um, General Hanegate will probably be the first one up for that, and also the Communist and the Spanish Civil War turn. We're not playing that actual expansion, but I just want to give you guys an update that Russia's turn will be next. Uh, Japan, though, it did make a few strategic movements here into uh, the uh, Pacific Ocean there. You have actually have three submarines. This one in 99 was already there, but it's actually moved one into 100 into C Zone 95. Who knows where they will end up? We'll pan over here briefly and just look at the American fleet in the west. This is our standard setup for 1936, but We'll look at the uh, South Dakota class battleships they have. Uh, they have the Baltimore class heavy cruiser, um, a few Fletcher class destroyers, a transport, submarine, and coastal sub, and as well as just a few forces sparse um, in uh, the Western United States. We'll pan over here. We see uh, 
a little bit of history here. The Queen's um, own infantry, uh, the Patricias here in Alberta, Saskatchewan. And we'll go over here, here, just look at the Japanese fleet. They actually have quite a strong fleet here. They have the Congo class battle cruiser. They have a torpedo boat destroyer. Um, a few of these uh, sculpts, which are the Nagato class battleships, which was actually Admiral Yamamoto's flagship, um, right up to the Battle of Midway. Um, and then eventually after the Battle of Midway, or sorry, the Battle of Pearl Harbor. Um, and then uh, at the Battle of Midway, he actually upgraded his uh, flagship to the Yamato. It was actually finally built by then. Um, you see down right here, here's a good replica. This is actually a replica of the Kaga carrier that will actually participate in the Battle of Pearl Harbor and the Battle of Midway. Um, a light carrier and a few other ships. Further down we go. So, yeah, the Japanese Navy at this point is no nothing to scoff at, that's for sure. But if you look at the American Navy, they are nothing either. They actually have two battleships in the Pacific and two battleships in the Atlantic as well as a fully loaded carrier. And then we'll see, <coughs> sorry there, bit of a dry mouth. We will see the Mediterranean and the Italian fleet. I've used an old battleship just to symbolize its battleship. It's got many coastal submarines, um, a torpedo boat destroyer, a few uh, destroyers, and they actually have a fleet down here um, in the Red Sea itself. <clears throat> but anyways, I digress. Let's look at a few things here. Um, the Spanish Civil War, even though we're not playing out expansion, but the actual Spanish Civil War. The Nationalists were fortunate. They actually invaded um, this Northern Territory in Spain here, took that and equalized the territory. So now the Republicans have three and the Nationalists have three. Um, we'll go down here to kind of my favorite part of the board, this game here. And we can see South America. You may notice a few changes here. I finally upgraded some of the sculpts. Got them painted since my last video. And you may notice a, a few chip changes. White chips are neutrals, the red are pro-axis, and the blue are pro-allies. And we'll just scan over it briefly here and look at it. There was a destroyer in the Gulf of Mexico for the Mexican Navy, and it's been upgraded to a light cruiser. Cuba has been upgraded to both a fighter and infantry. Um, I'm just going by memory here, so bear with me. I think Central America might actually have grew upgraded from militia to infantry. Um, Colombia here actually got a torpedo boat destroyer and from a militia actually upgraded to an infantry. Uh, Peru, I can't quite remember if anything happened with Peru there. I feel something has changed there. Um, Bolivia actually, instead of two militia, one cavalry has developed. Um, and of course, Paraguay and Uruguay, they both have a militia each. Down here in Peru, two advances. There's been a change with a coastal submarine and an artillery, and I think they even had a militia, but now they have an infantry. I could be wrong about that. I'm, like I say, I'm just going by memory here. Uh, they did have cruisers and destroyers, but the Argentinian Navy has now um, upgraded to a battleship and a torpedo boat destroyer. And uh, the Brazilian Navy actually has minus one transport. It was actually up in season 104. And you can see here, Brazilian fighter, um, and just a few infantry changes here. But all in all, it's pretty cool. I'm actually quite excited to play this expansion. I've already tried to influence Argentina. Hasn't turned out. Uh, but you know what, you never know, right? You know, Germany could get the luck of three or four or five dice rolls in a row and influence most of South America between Brazil, Chile, and Argentina have a very strong force. And it might help considerably, or it could just be a waste of money. You never know, and that's what's cool about this expansion. Um, I guess it's been played in Europe quite a bit with some very good success on being very equal. So we'll see how this game turns out. And regardless which way it turns out, it's just going to be fun to actually play down here is 
some of you know, South America uh, didn't really have a huge active role um, in the Second World War. It had a bit, um, mostly probably all of you know, um, with the, uh, the Graf Spey being sunk um, just off the coast down here off Uruguay. Um, but realistically, not a lot other events happened. I mean, transport, submarines, even the exodus out of Europe down to South America. But realistically, not much happened in this map. But in this version, probably will hopefully change history and see how that goes. Anyways, we'll go back up here to the big uh, enchilada. And that is Europe. Okay. Europe is quite full of everything. And you can see how busy this map is. And I'm going to actually go to the other side of the board here and just give you guys a general view. We'll just pan over here and actually just on our way there, we'll just see what's being developed here. Germany, of course, laid down the Graf Spee. Um, and uh, not much else is being developed because honestly, we're just in the bare bones of the first turn. And we'll take a look here and see how Europe looks. We have, uh, we have a few things going on in every part of the country, or sorry, every part of the continent. Um, you can see the British Navy, the home fleet's doing very well, quite strong. We have a ship just coming into Liverpool there, um, docking to probably bring some passengers and tourists over. Uh, you can see here right now, uh, Stockholm, Sweden is doing very well. You can see the new coastal defense ships. These are that Nevada class, but I know historical board gaming has just come out with a new version of the coastal defense ship. And honestly, I want to get my hands on it, but right now I got other things I got to spend my money on, unfortunately, but in time, in time, um, you can look here, uh, the Russian air force, it's pretty strong around Moscow and, uh, east of Moscow. And these are the new color schemes I've come up with. And I actually repainted my Russian planes, or at least some of them right now, to a silver color. Just, just give it a bit of a change. Uh, we'll pan here to the Polish Air Force and Armed Forces. And then head south down. And um, some maps like General Hand Grenade, I think he painted or, or left a lot of these white. I wanted to give them the colors that they're on. So like the Czechs, I gave them a kind of a brown look. Hungary, uh a pink look and Bulgaria a yellow look, obviously to match the, the color that they have and Bulgaria kind of that orangey look. Uh, Turkey was a bit different. Turkey actually went with General Hand Grenade's color cue because actually I really liked the green or the indigo with the red. I think it actually gave it a nice pop uh, for Turkey. So I definitely stuck with that, especially with the Yabuz battleship down there. Uh, and uh, and uh, I was actually lucky. General Hannigan actually gave me some Arab units down here, um, and I actually made them into my Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. You know, it's even down there in Yemen. You have a few guys, and I've just stolen a few capital cities here uh, for Iraq, Baghdad. That's actually the Moscow sculpt, but I have a few of them. And then and then down here you can see uh, the Taj Mahal. Um, eventually, at some point here, I don't have the Randalls for the warlords, warlords in China, but I hope to upgrade them eventually, and maybe even paint them a different color, just to have fun. And of course, then you obviously got to replace them as soon as, as soon as they unite and battle Japan. But right now, Japan isn't doing that, so we'll see how that happens. Just as a reminder, we're not playing the China at War expansion. Um, I was kind of a proponent for that, but uh, General Hand Grenade said, well, let's just leave it out. And I, honestly, I'm cool with that. We, we were actually talking about leaving all the expansions out and just playing a, a raw game. But I don't know. It's kind of fun to play a few expansions. Um, me, I'm always a lover of, of actual history. So I really wanted to play the Africa Corps. So we'll see how the Germans end up or if they even end up down there um, in that African theater. We can see the, the Graf Zeppelin here over Cairo. Some of you remember that famous photo. Um, but yeah, aside from that, we have uh, a few army groups here starting to form. We have Manstein's uh, 12th Army Group here in um, Eastern Germany and Kleist in Western Germany and Rundstadt in Berlin here. Um, kind of the top generals, in my opinion at the time. Um, definitely the high command would probably say otherwise. But somewhat historically accurate, 
in the fact that Manstein was kind of ousted back to Eastern Europe when his crazy idea of marching tanks and troops into the Ardennes and defeating the French was kind of ousted and became Hitler's idea. But uh, yeah, anyways, just my little fun there. And one thing we have taken over, the Germans have marched into Austria. And you can see the parliament building there in Austria and the Germans have taken that over. So the war hasn't started, but the Germans uh, definitely have started their act of aggression. Uh, the Rhineland has been taken a year ago in 1935 and German industry even in the east has been buffed up and you can see that factory right there um, in Eastern Prussia there being uh, developed. So next turn they'll have four major factories and I think that's probably going to be one of the major ones. Actually, no, I stand corrected. The Americans, it looks like they already have four major factories on the Eastern Seaboard. So at least they'll be up to snuff with them. So, yeah. Uh, we'll just take a brief look at the French armed forces um, with the new painting color scheme. I don't mind the green with these fighters. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I was... Larry, I always like the yellow for the fighters, but since I'm, I changed my color scheme, I wanted it just to work, and honestly, it's gonna work. I'll be fine with it. I just, I'm, I'm just fussy sometimes, and I'm my own worst critic, I'm sure. So, uh, yeah, French Navy is quite strong in both the Mediterranean and down here. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how the Italians turn pans out in this upcoming game. Um, like I say, we have to do Russia's turn next, as well as the Republican turn and the, uh, the, the Communist turn here in China. And then, of course, a few allies will go on, mostly the Commonwealth. Um, and then, of course, the Italian turn will come about. Um, and then the U.S., the um, other turns will follow. And basically, we'll be done our first turn, and we'll be going into 1937. So I just wanted to give you a brief overview uh, of everything. Who knows how the Abyssinian War will happen? I mean, there's been a lot of talk about developing and lend leasing to Abyssinia so the Italians can't invade it immediately. It's not worth anything, but at the same token, maybe that's a good thing for the Italians. Maybe they'll focus something elsewhere. Maybe they'll send transports and send these troops somewhere else. Maybe India. Maybe Madagascar, maybe South Africa. Who knows, right? Good or bad, it'll be definitely be interesting. And I hope you guys all stay tuned and enjoy what's going to happen here. So um, there's not much else to say other than just I hope you enjoy the coming videos. The General Hand Grenade and myself are going to come out and, and show you. I hope overall you'll be excited with the contents and the quality of the videos. Um, and I'll try my best to, to give you the best quality and just give you the uh, frequent updates as my schedule permits. But unfortunately right now, I have a lot going on in my life as everybody does. Some people don't have anything and hopefully you're a watcher then of all this. But if not, if you are just sitting at home and passing the time by, I'm thankful that you have joined me here in the lion's den. And I hope to see you in the upcoming videos of this summer event that General Hand Grenade and I are doing just to play this wonderful game, Global War 1936, version 3. That being said, General Hand Grenade, Panzer King, and Bad Bandana will be playing, hopefully, tomorrow night, Friday, June 26. See you guys all then. Take care, everybody. Panzer King, out.